Hey, what's up, guys? It's Drew from The Money Is Show, and today I have two special guests on the show for you, a young business couple, all the way from Hotland in my hometown, and uh, it's a husband-wife couple that started, uh, founded, and are the CEOs of the Engler Group up in North Georgia, which is a real estate agency uh, company. They got a cool story because they're young, and uh, he reminds me a lot of myself, except for I was, of course, much better looking at his age, <laughs> but... That was his wife that was laughing, so we'll now switch over to the Engler Group. Hey guys, Cameron and Hannah, how you guys doing? Good. Great, so happy to be here. Appreciate you flying all the way out from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks for having us. That's actually, did you fly from Atlanta or Chattanooga? I was just thinking about that. We flew from Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta. okay. Cause it, I mean, from where you're at in LJ, that's still a, tri it's a trip. Yeah, it was about an hour. Down there, Yeah. to the airport. Because up yeah. where I'm at in Alpharetta area, North Alpharetta, that's like, it's still almost an hour to get to the freaking airport with no traffic, oh, yeah. with no traffic. And if it was you go like at 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah we, we got up pretty early. <laughs> you got it early? Yeah. And you guys are hanging out here in, in Utah, Park City? Yep. Uh, is this your first time to Park City? Oh yeah, it's my first time to Utah in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you been to Utah before? Never. It's, I'm, it's I'm, unique, I've only huh? flew one, it one is other cool. time. Really, you've only flown one time? This, this is your second time to fly? Time. This is my first time. Shut up. I swear. <laughs> that was your first time to fly? Yep. And it was your second time to fly? Yep. My gosh, that's, I can't even, I can't even like process that. Like I, I fly so much. <laughs> I, I, I can't even think of what that feels like. Um, did you take Delta? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of that's course. Good. You just took Delta. <laughs> I so. was scared to take anything other than Delta. Other than Delta. Um, uh, very cool, man. So, what do you think? Of, what do you think of Utah so far? It's definitely from Georgia. It's I mean, definitely I'm from Georgia. different. Uh, you know, especially the mountains in LJ. You know. Yeah, yeah. They Way are, smaller uh, than LJ. They're little bitty hills compared to the ones out here. It's crazy because like in Georgia we say with the you know LJ Mountains, Blue Ridge Mountains, and then you come out here and you're like, wait a second, those aren't mountains, I was sold the bill of goods. Yeah, those are hills. <laughs> yeah, there's like rolling hills now, right? Um, yeah, it's a different, a totally different look out here, man. I, I, I totally, totally love it. Matter of fact, while we for the show, I was booking my mountain biking for tomorrow because I, I love going up in the mountains. It's like uh, extremely peaceful, man. I hope yeah. you guys get a t chance to go up there. All right, so I want to dive into the story because it's unique, and I, I want to try to help a lot of people here that I think you guys can help with your, your kind of story of personal life and then into the, into the business side, right, where, where you guys are at and where you're headed with it. Uh, again, Cameron, you're in this unique situation, and I want to say this because I think some of it, it ties into the story. You're two years younger than uh, Hannah. You guys mm -hmm. are married now, but you're two years younger than her. Uh, which kind of starts maybe around, let's start there with a story, not in business, but I want to start on the personal side uh, to help anybody who, you know, because as a, as a young person, especially like I grew up in, uh, in, in Georgia, which is like the, you know, Bible Belt area, right? And mm -hmm. it's like there was a ton of pressure to um, not have any type of physical sexual activity. And then like getting pregnant as a teenager was like earth shattering, Game over. <laughs> Re you sh like might as well just go s work at the Dollar General and stay there the entire <laughs> time. Like you have no future ahead of you, you know, people. And obviously, the story I want to get out is to a lot of young people right now is, hey, that's not actually true. Um, I'm not, and, and you guys can talk to this. I'm not saying that you should try to get <laughs> pregnant in, as a teenager, but if it does happen and and it, it does take place, uh, life still goes on, and you can actually yes. accomplish a lot s still at it. So. If you guys can, I'll let you kind of tell the story. I was going to just kind of, kind of prefix it there. Back up to where you want to start. I know you were in 10th grade, but tell me a little bit about the story and what it was like going through that as a young couple. Yeah, so uh, I met her in middle school. Uh, thought she was the hottest thing ever. And still do. Still do. <laughs> still do. And uh, I remember telling my friends, yeah. I'm going to get with that girl. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she, she blew me off at first. And then Typical women, man. I, he was younger. I was like, nope. Yeah, you can't date the. Uh, you're not a cougar at, in middle school. You can't be a cougar. <laughs> That's what in I was school. called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and anyway, so uh, uh, about a couple six months, like six months, went by. Yeah. And uh, I met her. I, I, I went to the bus stop, and this girl says, "Hey," and it's her. Uh -huh. And. Uh, I meet her there, and of course, me being the player that I was, uh, I uh, I was like, "Hey, can I get your number?" You know, and I also asked her for a for a hug. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's like the first time like... really talking to her. Uh, so what? What were you like? Sixth grade, seventh grade? 
seventh at that seventh, time. You were yeah. seventh. And you were, that means you had been a I freshman? I was in ninth grade, yeah. Oh, wow. So we saw each other at like where all the buses after they picked up middle school kids would come to the high school. Yeah. And I rode the bus at the time, so I saw him out there. We saw each other out there, which I yeah, felt like. Yeah, that was like a big deal dating a girl in high school being in middle school. Yeah, it was. I felt like the man. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> you guys meet, meet in middle school, start dating mm -hmm. after, after she ignored you for six months and made you earn it. Then you guys start dating in middle school, go through all the way through, uh, so you were in, let's say, seventh grade then. You go all the way through 10th grade, right? Seventh, eighth, and ninth. You're three, four years into dating at that point. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, then, you know, she at this point is a junior, senior? I was a senior. Senior? Yeah. I'm a sophomore. And, uh, you know, we're hitting things off. Things are great. I'm focused on football, and uh, we find out that we're pregnant, and uh, it was pretty crazy. Uh, I didn't really, you know, my, my dad actually had kids early, too. Mm -hmm. He had me Very, early. Very, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd always heard, you know, that's going to be super tough, and then to actually uh, <laughs> have it in my own life, um, I, I knew that I had to uh, go ahead and get my responsibilities, uh, accept my responsibility to take care of her and my new baby that was coming. But um, the next day, I actually find out that I'm going into foster care. I was getting off the bus, and these two guys, me and my brother, were going to the bus to go home. These two guys in suits, they uh, just grab us and say, hey, you, you need to come with us. Uh, there's been an incident with your mother. And uh, we're like, what the heck? We, we think an accident or something. Yeah, yeah. And sure. uh, they won't tell us any information, though. They just say, all we can say is there's been an incident. So they put us in a car, take us to uh, this building, and I see uh, defects on there. So I knew something was up, but I didn't really know what. And uh, we ended up that day being put into uh, Child Protective Services. So I find out she was pregnant, and the next day this happens. Very so. scary. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it, obviously there's a huge moment in life where like, hey, uh, I'm having a baby, and then 24 hours later, you're also now in foster care uh, and getting picked up by two strange men, if you will, uh, taking you off to uh, foster care uh, with, with, the, with the instance there. I'm gonna go to you for a second, Hannah. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, I'm trying to think through it. Like, I mean, obviously, like I said, having a baby, you're a senior. Senior then, finding out you're pregnant is like, oh crap, we're we're pregnant. Obviously, mm -hmm. I don't think you were trying to be pregnant in in tenth grade. And what was it like when you then find out your partner um, <laughs> was no longer even in the same household and was off to off to in this like crazy situation of defect slash foster care, not knowing where it's going to go, and now you have this baby as well. That had to be like a complete whirlwind. It was at, like a nightmare, yeah. really, because I was thinking, well, you know, in foster care, they can send someone anywhere, in, wherever in Georgia, if there's not a home available in the town right. you're in. So I was just freaking out, thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to see him anymore. And I, did, I just didn't know what they were going to do. Yeah, the, you already had this, like, massive unexpected with the baby and all yep. the unexpected things that happened during a pregnancy yep. and in the, in the nine months. And now you have this other total unexpected of, geez, my partner, I don't even know where he's going to be, where he's going to yep. end up at, where, where it's going to happen at. To me, the amount of stress and anxiety oh and would have been through was, the roof. It was uh, at that I was, time. I was freaking out. I want to ask you a personal question, if I can, and you guys don't feel free not to answer it. But um, what was there any point during your when you found out that you were pregnant? Was there any point that you guys thought, hey, maybe the best option would be to have an abortion and not move forward? Was no. there any thoughts? Never. Any that was never. Never went through your head. Never option for never. us. Never. Actually, immediately when we found out I was pregnant, because I kind of had some suspicions, like we just started making plans for what we we're going to do immediately, because there's sure. no way I was going to get an abortion. So, yeah, I mean, no, we were ready to take it on and just, you know, have the responsibility. And then, you know, that happens, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm al I felt alone. Oh, I can't imagine the aloneness of, yeah. of that time. If I can ask, why was there no thought of abortion? Was it where, where you're, was it the way you were brought up with religion and value, a value system in that, or? Just that it hit and it was like not even an option. 
Where did it um, come from? A mix. A mix? Uh, I, w of course, was brought up in a Christian family. Environment, you know? uh-huh. So I was like, no, there's no way I could do that. But I also just personally wouldn't want to. Gotcha. It's just I wanted our baby, you know, sure. and I loved him. We still do, of course, but we were uh -huh. together for a while, and it ain't like it was some random Right, one thing. night you guys were at a party yeah. in high school, and, and it happened, right? You guys yeah. were obviously dating at the time yeah. for several years. But either there. way, I wouldn't. Gotcha. Okay. So you guys now, you figure the story out. Now you're a senior, you're in sophomore, you're having a baby, but you're now you're also kind of being treated like a baby to a certain degree <laughs> of like, you know, you're in 10th grade and at 10th grade as a boy, especially as a kind of when you really start exploring like your freedom to a certain degree and driving and all those right. things are happening. And now I've been, I would have been like so frustrated getting picked up and then shift around and I would just stay in my house by myself, you know, mm -hmm. then... Yeah. getting shipped around to different places or whatever. So the amount of like frustration on your part had been through the roof. Yeah, uh, exactly, man. I mean, and also like they're, I'm, I'm having a, a child at this point, but the the way that the system works, you, you, you still don't get to uh, accept the responsibility to, to be an adult now for, for that baby and start getting things lined up to provide for your responsibilities. Yeah, so frustrating because like, you, you have this baby now, you want to take on the responsibility, you want to say, hey, I'm gonna be a dad, I'm gonna be a part of the pregnancy, I'm gonna be part of the, the childbirth and, and getting prepared, but then you're getting like, tossed around and controlled by the system you can't circumvent because of your age, and it won't allow you to do anything that you actually want to do, which are kind of the right things to go do, Man, I would have been like running my head against a wall of like total frustration. Yeah, it was awful. And then, you know, it, it just kept going through my mind. I, you know, I wanted to be there for her and, you know, her just having to be kind of alone during yeah. that period uh, sucks. That was tough. That would <laughs> yeah. be super tough. Like you're saying, like, here I am having a kid, but I'm getting treated like a kid, <clears throat> but I'm supposed to be a dad and a father, but I'm getting treated like, you know, a kid as well. You guys ha uh, have the baby, you graduate high school, you go through the, you, the rest of the high school, uh, both you graduate mm -hmm. high school. Um, you start a job working and you get a scholarship for football to go play football, right? Yes. Okay, so here's what I pick up at because I want to go through another tough decision in life. All right. Right? Like, again, I'm going through, like, this is a tough two years that you guys went through, right? Of like in foster care, then going back, and then having the baby and so forth. And then you graduate high school, and now at that point, at least you're like 18 and can actually fully be an adult, and no one can, like, foster care can't tell you what to do and so forth. But at that moment, you get a scholarship to go play football in North Dakota, which is almost as far away as you possibly could have went. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you, if you look on a map and put Georgia and North Dakota, it's like there's not Florida yeah. and, C and Washington State are about the only two things further. And you end, and you get a scholarship to go play football. Uh, what's the conversation like between you two of, do I move to North Dakota, take the scholarship, or do I stay here? What, how, does that, how does that transpire? Well, we knew that, you know, in our situation, we, you know, we grew up hearing, you know, you need to get an education in order to make it, in order to provide for your family. So yeah. our conversation was, you know, it kind of, it had to be done we we felt that if we were if i was going to be able to provide that i needed to go get an education mm. so and this was my only chance you know we didn't come from uh a, a money a family with money so this was my only shot at ever getting an education because we just couldn't we couldn't afford it any other way so uh you know with that i decided that I was going to go up there. She supported it, and she was going to come with me. Um, that's what the coach told me that he was going to provide uh, within the next semester, uh, provide her an opportunity to come up there as well. We were going to get marital housing, and uh, it, that's what was supposed to happen. But uh, yeah, the, it was just we, we just decided that um, it, it was the right thing to do to move up there. Or I want to talk to you, Hannah, I'm going to go back to you for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, I am, I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes, right? <laughs> like like yeah. where you were in life. And to me, I'm, I'm like looking back and thinking, 
you know, man, you, you get pregnant and there's this immediate disconnect because he gets picked up the next day from yeah. defects and it's like this immediate separation. Then graduates, he's 18, way more, can do more stuff on his own. And now it's, now it's, I'm gonna move away to go to college, right? Mm -hmm. Not that he was wanting to go to North Dakota, but I'm saying that was where it was and that was the opportunity that was the only opportunity available. And then you had to deal with, hey, now we could almost start the family and move on. Then there's a second shift of like, okay, he's leaving again mm -hmm. uh, to go to North Dakota. Uh, what was that like? And obviously you, you didn't fly out to see him because this was your first time to fly. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it wasn't like an easy place to like drive to or oh, we'll spend weekends together. It was like, well, I'll see you whenever you get back, you know? Mm -hmm. What was it like? So I originally was kind of like, oh my gosh, can you not find a college somewhere else yeah, closer because road. this is really far. There's <laughs> like 1,900 colleges in Georgia and you picked North Dakota. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. At first I was a little bit upset. I was like, that's too far, I need you here. Sure. But then of course I thought about it and we talked about it and I was like, well, I'm not gonna tell you not to go take that opportunity. Wow. And I knew he loved football. I'm not gonna be that person that's like, I'm gonna leave you if you go do this. So yeah. I, I was like, I know whatever's meant to be will happen. And I had a feeling you'd come back anyways because it's freezing in North Dakota. <laughs> Who wants to be up there? Exactly, it's too cold there for a Georgia boy. I was thinking about you know going up there because what his coach had said, but I mean, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. But I I was scared at first, you know. Yeah, I mean, to obviously, to kudos to you it, it, to um, to be such a supportive partner and 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 wife. I mean, that's uh, I can't probably think of many women that would be like, okay, yeah, let's do it again round two and you can leave and you know the first time not being your fault of course and this one is like that choice thing. I mean that was super I could I'm putting myself there and thinking man how difficult that would have been for you and and to hear you say that you totally supported him and and on that journey and, and the dream of his dream of playing football is is like super complimentary uh, for you which I think brings into maybe why your guys's business relationship works very well as well which is where, I want, where I'm headed with this whole thing, this story here is, obviously we all have different paths, right? We all have different journeys and they're not always the way that we meant them to be or plan them to be or whatever and things happen in my life, your life. And you're, the journey that you guys are on, uh, you guys have made it into what it has been. Like you guys took from what it, wherever it was, hey, these are the cards that we dealt right now and let's go figure out a way to, to improve where we're at. And I love a conversation we had in our office, Anna, because you were talking about somewhere in my family, someone in my generation, I mean, someone in generation eventually has to say, okay, I'm gonna be the one that changes our financial mm -hmm. situation. And it seems like both of you guys are kind of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, you come back from college after you kind of find out that it wasn't what was promised, put it, putting it shortly and lightly, of there was no moving her up there, there was no marital home that was gonna happen, there was no uh, another, another uh, shoe dropping for you. It was, well, you're already up here, just stay up here and finish your collegiate football uh, uh, career. And at that point you say that, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna stay up here without my wife for four or five years. Yeah. And, and you move back. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you a question. You know, so many young men have a dream uh, to go on to play professional sports, right? It's like so many young people have that ambition and dream and, and you get to college and you play through high school and have a baby but keep playing and, and football is life for you at the time and, and almost even to a certain degree a way out of, of financial situations and family situations and, and then you go to college, you get your scholarship, you end up going to college and then in first year into it you're like, I, I can't have my wife, I can't have my baby up here. It's either football or go back home and go to work. And you choose to go back home and go to work. And, and kind of, I'm gonna say give up on, but set aside uh, a, a massive personal dream of God knows how many hours in a weight room and, and running and so forth. What was it like coming to that realization that it's time to hang it up and go back and take my responsibilities? Uh, well, you know, after my, my coach uh, kind of, whenever I realized those promises that he made weren't, weren't gonna happen, um, the thought of leaving her down there to fend for herself and 
be alone. It just uh, just wasn't something that sit right sit right with me. Yeah. Um, and you know, giving up football. I mean, it's a awesome game. Uh, my childhood dream, you know, but eventually, uh, you sometimes you have to put away dreams mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, deal deal with your responsibilities and provide for your family. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that I think you know, as I spend the day with you here, is is um, how much character I see with you of taking care of responsibilities, like especially the generations that are here now, it's like, I think one of the biggest things we miss in our country as a society is this word called personal responsibility of, you have personal responsibility, like you did this or whatever it is and, and there's personal responsibility and, and it seems like in the world that we live in, nobody wants to take personal responsibility for anything. Mm -mm. It's like, it was somebody else's yeah. fault, it was somebody else's problem, it, it, it could never be my problem, right? And here you are at, as a sophomore in high school, trying to take personal responsibility. Uh, senior in high school, trying to take personal responsibility. And then in college, giving your dreams to take, again, personal responsibility. Is there any, anywhere that you can look back and think where that level of character of taking personal responsibility came from? I would say uh, probably my dad. My dad's always uh, you know, worked that into me. He, he took uh, opportunities in my childhood uh, to sit down with me and have those types of conversations. Uh -huh. and, you know, there's going to be times in life where, you know, you, you got to do the right thing always. Mm. And uh, I think that's where that comes from, my, my father. Mm -hmm. um, so let's pick back up on the story because I'm going to get in the business <coughs> side of it now. Now you guys are back together in LJ, uh, Georgia, North Georgia, and um, you're back from college. Uh, some of you guys moved in back together starting the family side of things now and now work uh, and the stress and problems of money and paying for bills and trying to get ahead all start kicking in now all of a sudden, right? Super fast dose of real world mm -hmm. kicks in, right? Uh, okay, tell me what, what happens. You're, you're working where? Uh, so whenever I come back, I don't got a job and uh, I need to make some money to sure. buy diapers and everything so uh, my dad owned a business a construction business he still uh, is in the business but at the time that I knew that was going to be my best uh, opportunity to make the most uh, without having to you know stay at a job you know six months to a year uh, so I started working with him doing uh, hard labor sanding drywall getting the worst. Covered in. I hate drywall. <laughs> it was, you know, just manual labor jobs. Um, it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> You're 19 at the time. Yes. Around, around there, give or take. Yeah. You're 19 at the time. And you start working construction. You're working as well. I was well. at a daycare. Yeah. I worked at a daycare for a couple years. So now you're not a single mom, but to a certain degree, when, when you were, when he was at college, kind of living like a single mom. Yeah. To a certain degree, right? Um, and while being that away or whatever you call it, single mom, um, you get a job as well at a daycare. Mm -hmm. Is that because you just couldn't get enough of kids screaming and yelling or <laughs> just a dying need to be around them more? Well, let me tell you, that was, um, that was fun. But, yeah. um, I was working there while he was in North Dakota also. Right. And, you know, I was a single mom and they had free daycare and I knew the people that owned it. so. It was a good fit at the time. Of course, it wasn't paying the bills, really. Sure. Um, but yeah, I had worked there. It was stressful because I had a toddler at home. Right. So he was- And then you're around kids all day long. Actually, the age group that I had, which was about seven to eight kids in one little room, they were about one and a half, was the same age of my child. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just... It was interesting, um, stressful. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So you're working at daycare at this time. You're working construction at this time. And as somewhere along those lines, you guys are have a conversation and come to a realization of crap this is not going to work financially financially not the relationship but financially yep how does it happen um oh you can speak you go ahead. okay so well we were both you know of course barely making it paying the bills and then one day you know he starts talking about real estate and i was thinking you know that's a that's a great way to go especially because it doesn't involve college and it's a sales job, so you can determine what you make. And I knew he was motivated anyway, so I knew he would do good. Mm -hmm. 
And so he decided to go that route and then I get into insurance sales because my mom does it. So I thought, okay, let's both go the sales route. And I did not like insurance. I just, it life wasn't insurance, car insurance. Life insurance. Life insurance, okay. So you can talk about the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we just, we were, we, we just were barely getting by working in our previous jobs with my dad and her at daycare. And so, you know, whenever I, I've, I did the math one day, I could either put in more time and sacrifice time, or I could learn uh, a higher paying skill. Yeah. And so that, that's what drove me to the sales because I knew there wasn't a limit on it. And uh, I just thought it would be a, uh, it wasn't something that had a big barrier to get into. So I knew if I, I just learned the skills, uh, it'd be something that would provide money for my family. Mm. You start your real estate agent career in LJ. You're in insurance yes. at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and very pregnant at the time, by the way, I will add. That's right, that's right. You have a second baby. <laughs> yes. Uh, right around that same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you're back home uh, and, and you have your baby girl mm -hmm. uh, at, at that time, right? Because she's two right now. So I was really pretty far along pregnant when I decided to get into insurance because I was like, you know, I, I want to be doing something. So sure. we have another baby coming. So I got into it and I was very dedicated to it. Was the insurance commission based only? Yes. Yeah. And obviously agent as well. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. You guys take two commission based only <laughs> yeah, smart, right? freaking jobs at the same time. What could possibly yeah. go wrong? It was, um, well, okay. So the place, the office I worked out of was in Atlanta. Uh -huh. So I would drive there twice a week for the conferences that they would do and like the training and cold I would do cold calling which it it did teach me a little bit about cold calling so I, I was kind of glad I had that before I started mm -hmm. real estate one car by the way oh we sure. had one car Perfect. um I was super far along had you know not a hard I had a pretty hard pregnancy but I was driving you know I was I was motivated to do it but at the end of the day it was just something that made me miserable I mean it wasn't it was just not first of all yeah. insurance is boring and it's just it was a lot of driving too because I had to go to people's personal homes very yeah. It was kind of sketchy too. Like it wasn't really safe for me to be doing it. So I just, you know, I started seeing how good he was doing in real estate. I mean, he was up late. He was really took time to do training on his own, not even from Remax or anyone. Like he, he just did his own research, taught himself skills from, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube and multiple things. And he started doing really well, especially for a new agent. So it really motivated me to join him. You became an agent a year ago? Almost a year ago. Almost yeah. a year ago. And then you guys, you guys partner up and start the uh, the Engler Group, mm -hmm. which is your guys' last name, and you guys now now running the Engler Group uh, up in LJ, Georgia. Yes, is that right? Both agents uh, now. Um, you talk about as an agent. The thing I th when I think about an agent, I think about um, it seems like there's a thousand, no, hundred thousand real estate agents. It's like everybody. Oh yeah. It became a super hot job for some reason. Everybody went and became an agent. And then yeah. there's this unique thing where it's like, anytime someone goes to sell a house, they don't actually like look for an agent. Mm -hmm. They just call their buddy, friend, cousin, whoever it is that is a real estate agent. And they're like, oh, I gotta get to sell my house. Mm -hmm. Which makes it super hard to go get business because everybody knows an agent. Yep. You know what I mean? Right. It's, not like, it's not like where it used to be where there's only so many agents. It's like, dude, everybody freaking knows an agent right now. All right, so obviously the big question becomes how the heck do you drive business to your direction versus getting mixed in the fold of all the other agents? I think uh, the question you have to ask yourself is why should someone use you over the, their relative that mm -hmm. they know yep. so well? Because they don't know you at all. And um, I think you just have to brand yourself that you have enough value to, for that to make sense for them to use you. Mm -hmm. um, and just doing things that other agents just aren't willing to do, you know. Well, talk, let me talk about the brand side for a second. Um, a lot of misconceptions on branding and brand, et cetera. But when when you talk about brand yourself a certain way, well, what does that mean to you when you say brand your, yourself uh, a, a different way or a separate way from other agents? What do you mean by brand yourself? So brand, I would say, you know, Whenever people look at you on mm -hmm. social media, what do they see? Are you, like, what's, what, what type of 
agent are you? Uh, what's your story? Who are you as an agent, as mm -hmm. a person too? Um, and just taking a look at what other people are doing in the marketplace and capitalizing on things that they're not doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. figuring out a niche that no one's taking advantage of and capitalizing on that. So, I think. so you're looking for uh, you're looking for a niche in the market, a niche um, lane, if you will, that you that you can jump into and then brand yourself as the solution, if you will, of that niche area uh, of of business there. For sure. When I think of the word brand, with going on the lines of what you talked about there, when I think of the word brand, I think about um, how you're describing it is um, when someone in that niche, whatever it may be, right? Um, so when LJ uh, wants a mountain home or a second home in the Blue Ridge Mountains, um, it's them, I, I, them, I, them associating um, their, if it was a second home, it's them associating their second home with your brand, your face, if you will. For sure. In that, in that example, right? So it's a, like, I'm giving you a niche market, right? A niche market could be, we want to specialize with out-of-state second home buyers, right? It would be a niche, right? And... Uh, to create a brand then, that means that anytime someone thinks about, oh man, I gotta buy a second home up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, they would then have to associate a second home in Blue Ridge Mountains with you. Mm -hmm. Because that's how you branded and made them feel when anytime they saw anything on social media, that's how they thought, viewed you as. Is that what you're, is that, am I saying that right, am I saying that back to you the right way? For sure, that's, that's exactly what it is. Uh, and I think, you have to make sure whatever brand you choose, whatever mm -hmm. niche you choose, that needs to align with who you are as a person as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's that's one thing that I feel some people miss out on uh, trying to brand themselves as something that they see working with someone else. That might not work for you. Yeah. If especially if it doesn't align with you as a person, you know. So. Yeah, I think I think inside of branding, obviously I do a ton of branding. I think the word authenticity is an absolute must inside of branding. And I think a lot of people, uh, even myself when I was first into business, um, you know, just recently, not recently, but maybe maybe I don't know, a year ago, I was going through a bunch of stuff with, with social media and, and, and trying to navigate through it and figure some stuff out. And I had all these social media companies coming in. I was paying all these people, the social media companies to do all this stuff. And I was super frustrated. and because um, I wasn't getting the message out that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And I remember in this meeting, uh, they kept asking me, like, okay, well, do you want to be more like um, this person, or do you want to be more like this person, or do you want to be like this person? I remember being so frustrated saying, I don't want to be any of them. Yeah. I just want to be me. Like, I, I'm not trying to be anybody out there. I'm just trying to be me, and this is what I do in, in my life, right? This is like... This is it. You can like it, love it, hate it, think it's stupid, but this is what I do. And I've always found great um, satisfaction and comfort in knowing that uh, I'm not trying to be somebody else. This is just who I am. This is my brand. And not, not in a negative or, or a, a mean way of take it or leave it, but as a way of like, I can only reach who I can reach because, but I am very authentic to who I am, right? For sure. And I think in any type of branding, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head that you've got to be authentic to the, to you as a person, because it will show through eventually. Yeah. It always freaking shows through. Hannah, let me ask you a question about working together, because there's a unique part here that of husband and wife teams that struggle massively working together, right? Like, where's the line at? Especially that if you're working together in an agency, which means it's kind of a work from home job that you guys are both kind of working from home for the most mm -hmm. part, and you have two kids at home, and then there's the husband and wife relationship and the partner relationship and then the mother father relationship and then the business partner relationship. That's a lot of blurry lines, mm -hmm. right? Um, any, any tips or advice you can give on, on working together as husband, wife, partners, et cetera? Yes, yeah, so for us, I feel like our strengths are different. So I prefer him to control you know, most of the business stuff especially with the marketing and everything because he's more creative and I feel like that's his strength. For me, I feel like, you know, the little details like 
you know, like going on the MLS, sending that. I'll even do that for him sometimes cause since he does so much of the marketing. And then just dealing with people and talking to people. Like sometimes he's too busy or something. I feel like we have different strengths in that way. And then I think what's also important is to not let it mess up your relationship or mess with it. You know, like I personally think it works best for me. I see him as the leader of our team. And I'm not trying to compete with him. I do think there's probably some couples out there that, I don't know, maybe the women think, well, I want to compete with my husband, you know. I mean, not everyone, but there's mm -hmm. probably sure. some. I just don't see it as a competition. I feel like we work best when we work together. And I like for him to take the lead in our team. I, I see him as the leader. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I don't have a problem with that. Like, it, it actually works better for me that way. Yeah, I totally agree. Us. I think that in any, in any type of business, in any type of sports, uh, relationship, there naturally has to be a leader. Yes, right? definitely. Um, you can't have 11 leaders yeah. uh, on one team all saying, this is what we're all gonna do, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. You, you have to have that one leader that with that one voice that the team, if you will, at that moment in time on the field um, follows, right? And, and they're the ones kind of calling the shots. Not that the other 10 players are not leaning in, giving what they see, their advice, their opinions, whatever it is. But I think in anything naturally, there has to be kind of this uh, uh, leadership role that has to be taken, and then mm -hmm. there has to be a um, followership role that yes. has to be taken. And it's not a winner or loser. It's not that one is good and one is bad, or one mm -hmm. is right and one is wrong. And I think sometimes in our society, kind of what you were talking about, I think it becomes this like competition of yep. like, well, I have to be the number one person or the number one salesperson or the number one whatever it is in, in, in that relationship and it doesn't work you don't have to be um, yeah I don't I, think it would work that way because eventually you're gonna end up you know especially in any business you're gonna end up competing and start you know you're gonna have relationship issues from that yeah so I feel like know your role for your relationship for what works I feel like personally you know he's the man of the household and he takes care of us and I I want him to be of course he's the leader of our team and I see him that way I'm not you know upset like well, I want to control things, you know, and, and I know some people, their relationships are different. So it's sure. whatever really works for your relationship. But for us, I see him as the leader do you, of our team. Do you, guys have, do, you have any, do you guys have any rules, if you will, or guidelines of, I'll mix stuff up. Um, okay, after seven, we don't do any more business. We only do family stuff or we don't start business until 10, 10 a.m. Do you have any type of like rules around the house that you guys... Uh, ab abide by when it comes to business slash family and or is it more of um, the family and business is more integrated and mixed in mm -hmm. it's just part of uh, the ecosystem that's there which way more is it I would say what you just said um, we do not set time limits to work because for one I don't think we'd be very successful because yeah. this job I mean I've been up till 12 1 a.m. so is he working so of course, we make time for family, and we pretty much work from anywhere if we have to. We don't set times like when we f have to finish because it don't it wouldn't work. Yeah, and, and the way 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 we balance that is, uh, you know, sometimes whenever I'm working, she might be spending time with the kids. Oh yeah. Uh, sometimes whenever she's working, I'm spending time with the kids, so it, it balances out. Yeah, yeah. So, any any other um, Hannah, and I'll throw it over to you, Cameron. Any other uh, on this topic of. Uh, working relationship. Any other uh, advice, tips, uh, techniques that you want to talk about when it comes to a husband-wife working relationship slash partnership? So I think basically you just need to have a conversation with one another about what works and just set set the the role for each other and how you're comfortable with each other. And I just I think don't com don't compete because you're a team. Mm -hmm. So you need to work together because it's your family. Mm -hmm. Just you know, just set set what you want for each other, like how you want things to be, have a conversation about it, and then, and really do it, act that way, you know. Yeah, I think the competition, uh, again, the competition illustration and advice you gave, I think is probably the best advice in the sense of too much of couples, relationships, um, business partnerships is, is this massive competition, which is a little bit of ego is gonna play inside of that. And anytime there's egos inside of a relationship, it's gonna be super hard yes. to yeah. work out. I would like to say too, in this generation, it's, and I'm not against, don't be offended at anyone, but I'm not against this. It's just personally, um, I've seen a lot of the 
you know, the feminist stuff, that's like a big thing these days, sure. which is great. I think you can be, you know, you can be feministic and you can be a powerful woman beside your man. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of women see it as, well, I have to, to dominate the man and, and be above him to feel that way. But no, you can work together and be a power couple. You don't have to be above the man or anything. Like, you know, you can work together and yeah. you can stand beside the man and still feel powerful and work together mm -hmm. instead of it having to be a competition of, well, I'm a woman and, you know, I want to be, I want to prove something. I, I just, I think that's where in this generation that that's a mistake. I feel like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, obviously in our society now, feminism is like a massive, it, it yeah. obviously has been around for a long time, uh, you know, decades and decades, but obviously in the last, whatever, 10, 20 years, it's in this explosion mode. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like we're trying to define as a society, what it is and where does it fit, where does it work, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I agree with what you're saying, like, feminism does not mean that you have to be the leader or number one or or uh, in this massive competition. You don't have to uh, be against the man. And you don't have to be against yeah. the partner, the husband. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the same hand, I also think where there is room for growth is on the uh, uh, male side of supporting the strength and the independence of the female. Mm -hmm. right. And and I yes. think that there was a time that was probably too much of no, and, and again, as I'm speaking out of my generation here, but it seems like in the past there was a point of like, n there wasn't any um, respect for the strength that a woman was providing mm -hmm. inside the sure. household. Definitely. And it was almost looked at as a second tier type thing. and it's not even remotely close to a second tier right. yeah. uh, stay-at-home mom. I, I think one of the most honorable, beautiful things in the world is a stay-at-home oh, uh, yeah. uh, wife and stay-at-home mom yeah. and, and what they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think in the feminist world, I think one thing that I have taken away from it is the ability for the males to appreciate, accept, and uh, understand the role that the uh, female plays inside the yeah. relationship. Exactly. Definitely. I'm going to turn it to you, Cameron. Any thoughts on, on what she just said? Yeah, I mean, without her, uh, like what we're doing, it does not exist. Yeah. My kids, uh, I, I would be covered up in... in Diapers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, w without her, this just doesn't happen. So um, thankfully, you know, she, we, we, we've sat down and uh, we just laid our cards out there. Hey, this is what uh, we're good at. Uh, you're good at this. I'm good at this, and allowing our strengths to work together instead of, uh, you know, trying to pick on each other's weaknesses, mm. you know, stuff like that. It's amazing because in a partner in a relationship, both people have strengths, both have, people have weaknesses, and you can either play into each other's strengths or you can expose each other's weaknesses because no one knows your weakness better than she does, and of course. no one knows her weaknesses better than you do, and it's so easy in a relationship to pick and point out the weaknesses and ignore all the 25 strengths that they're bringing to, to the relationship. I want to kind of end it before I go to the money assignment real quick, but I want to end it with, is there any other advice that you guys want to give uh, uh, teen moms that happen or young people that get pregnant in a relationship in 10th grade, 9th grade, whatever it is? Any advice you'd give them right now, looking at where you're at right now? Yes, yeah, so, you know, I know it's very common that you, know, you get pregnant. Of course, that's a shock. You're young. You don't know what to do, and of course, a lot of the time, you get pregnant and you're not, you know, you're not in a relationship, so it's stressful, and it's easier to just give up and say, you know what, and you need money right away, so you're going to go get a basic job, not making enough, being probably miserable, and thinking this is it. I mean, I've had a kid young. I feel like some girls almost punish themselves for that, mm -hmm. and I don't. Th I think it should be the the very opposite. You had mm -hmm. a kid young, um, but that does not mean that you can't be an example to other people and do bigger things for yourself and your kid mm -hmm. you know I mean there's so much opportunity out there especially these days so I feel like don't you know don't let that stop you of course there's going to be a little more struggle but sure I feel like it's it's a lot worse in the long run if you don't try to do something to change it yeah I think a great point you brought up that I haven't thought about is I think a lot of times especially especially probably more for the women than the men I think women kind of in a certain way like you said punish themselves of I can't do this or I shouldn't do this or well I'm a I'm a you know 16 year old mom so I don't qualify for mm -hmm. this or whatever it is and they kind of go this this role of kind of punishing themselves mm -hmm. and not allowing themselves to um, 
be who they are. I think it's, I think it's something I've never thought about, but I totally can see how, especially from the, from the like I said, the female side, of them kind of punishing themselves um, um, for that. Any advice from you, Cameron, from the uh, male side? Uh, I would just say, you know, if you have a child young or anything, <clears throat> just know that it's not the end of the world. Um, and if you're struggling with something, you're struggling to, uh, you know, find something that is allowing you to provide for your family, I would say just uh, find someone that has what you want already. They have the life that you want and either try to meet with them and buy them lunch or something or, you know, just analyze what they've done to get themselves there and try to replicate it. Yeah. yeah it's, it's another great point. I think that you can totally, in anything, but especially as a young couple, if you're looking for a lighthouse, if you will, find that couple that you're trying to, at least from what you can see, emulate and be like and head that direction and use that as kind of your north, north star, if you will, and pointing you to the right direction. Exactly. Um, no one, no, there's no one in this plan that has the perfect plan no. of parenting, the perfect plan of becoming an adult, the perfect plan of starting a business. Like, dude, there's, everybody has different paths, right? Uh, you you got to find the closest North Star that you can find and to the best of your ability, head that direction. And man, I got nothing but a, a ton of respect for both of you and in and, and, and business and, and in life. And I, I, I can't compliment you enough, Cameron, on the personal responsibility. I think it's one of the biggest things that lack in our society as a whole today is personal responsibility and uh, total respect for you for that. And, and of course, uh, Hannah, I love the amount of um, strength that you represent as a, as a uh, young single mom at the beginning, uh, but also love the amount of support and strength you have in yourself to support your husband and your partner through your guys' relationship and be, become a team that actually can produce mm -hmm. versus two separate individuals that are really like two monkeys in a bag fighting with each other <laughs> over one, you know, banana or something. You guys have found a way to put together a team, and it, it's, it's a lot of kudos to both of you. I'm going to end it with the last question, which is the money is show question. And we have a picture here of both of you guys, um, uh, Cameron and Hannah. And it's obviously it's just the money is. What I want you guys to do, and you guys can either talk about it uh, and come up with one answer. You guys barely have it, I don't know. Or you guys are more than willing to put uh, well, your answer and your answer and then both of you guys uh, sign it Cameron you're over here so kind of sign it on this side and Hannah you kind of sign it on this side so you guys can have one answer combined or you can have both separate answers totally up to you on this uh, give you that right there and I give you the sharpie right here what you write it okay uh oh that means I might have the better handwriting <laughs> someone that has bad handwriting alright and then once you guys write it hand it back to me and then we'll discuss and talk about uh, your guys' answer here you want me to go ahead and sign it? Yeah, yeah. You sign oh, it, and then okay. she, can, or she can sign it. Just kind of Where above you your. Want me to sign anywhere? Uh, or above, kind of your name. Okay. And between the that arms, like there, you go. Perfect. My signature is always weird looking. <laughs> Don't punish yourself. Remember. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Here we go. This is uh, Cameron and Hannah Engler uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, and their answer is money is a requirement. Uh, Brittany, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's the first time we've had that answer. My favorite part of the whole show is new answers. Like, I'm like, sweet, a new answer for the wall. Super in interesting. I grin as I read that answer, because uh, I don't know what you mean by it. I'm about to find out, but I have <laughs> this initial like, thought of what that means. But when you guys say uh, money is a requirement, I want both you guys to answer. So Cameron, you go first, and Hannah, you give your opinion as well. What does that mean when you say money is a requirement? Uh, I think... With, without money, you know, you can't provide for your family. Yeah. You can't help people. If someone gets sick, yep. uh, you can't do anything for them. Um, so I think you not going out there and trying to uh, get money, not, not in the sense that it's like everything, but not, by not doing it, it's a disservice to your, your family and everybody that you care about around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right, you go, and then I'm going to go. Okay. So I think money is a requirement because, I mean, the world's hard enough. Life is hard enough without it. Yeah. So, I mean, without it, it's almost impossible, honestly. Um, you're going to always have problems, but to have money in your family, it makes everything easier and less stressful, and you can focus on what's important. 
Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a requirement to grow any business or to grow in your life. Yeah. I mean, you need, you need money. You know, it's so funny, and, it's, it, and it, I was hoping this is where you're gonna go with it, and, and when, when I was grinning, and this is exactly what I was, thought you were gonna say, and I'm very glad. I think so many people deny that, that concept. Oh, they do. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, they are like, what, uh, and there is some truth to this statement, but it's like, um, why do I have to have money to be happy? And, okay, I'm not saying in this weird kind of monk-like way, I'm sure there's a way to find a way to have it without it. But if your son was to get massively sick or my kid would get massively sick, when I have money, there's a lot of stuff I can go do that the other parent, whatever, may not be able to go do because I do have this money. When, uh, when a, a car breaks down on the side of the road, when I have money, like it sucks, but it's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I can call a, a tow truck, I can call the Uber, I can be back to my office and I'm, I'm on with my day. You have no money. Man, you, you, you can call a buddy to try to get a chain and a truck and to start pulling this thing down the road, right? And it's such just like this concept of like, dude, no, money is a requirement. Like, you, you, you need it to eat. You need it to pay your bills. You need it to, to, to take care of your kids. Like, it's a freaking requirement. Again, it goes by like personal responsibility. Like, yeah, you have a, you have a responsibility to go make money. That's like, right. you owe it to your family. You owe it to your children. Money is a requirement. You can, we can all pretend and bare a head in the sand like it's, like, you don't have to have it. But dude, money is a freaking requirement. Like, What's the other plan that you have? <laughs> like, let me take it all away from you. What's your next plan? You know what I mean? And I think that we kind of have, have grew up, we, we're, we're, oh, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna put my, uh, us in the same group. We kind of grew up together, uh, and I'm only doing it because I'm way older than you, but if I put myself in your group, I feel young again, so. <laughs> you don't have to laugh at that, to be honest. That was <laughs> not needed to laugh out loud, at least. But when you kind of grow up in this world of like, grow up in a poor family, and it's almost like they try to say, um, it's almost like they paint money as, as this bad thing. Yeah. And, and that you don't, you don't have to have it, you don't need it, you can find happiness in other places. And we kind of get integrated in our head that that's the way that it works. And the reality is, it's almost like I feel like sometimes poor people use it as the excuse to their children as to why they don't have it. That's exactly yep, So they that's make it, it like this bad thing, like, oh, well, rich people aren't happy. Uh, and rich people are evil, whatever it is, right? You, you know my sayings that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going through here. And I think it's, it, it's, it's just not a true concept. Mm -mm. And I, so I freaking love your answer. It's a bold answer and I absolutely believe it, respect it. And at a young age of, of 22, I'm glad you guys understand it. Like, it's your duty. It's your God-given right to go get money. And, mm -hmm. and you have a responsibility uh, and your word is you have a requirement in life to go get it. Uh, so great, great answer, guys. I love having you guys out here. You're a great couple and, and a lot even from my old age that I can learn from you guys and how you guys work together and you both have great strengths and uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with you guys and again, compliment you both of you for your, uh, again, strength as a single mom and, and, and uh, independence and your die hard character of personal responsibility is like total respect for that. And you guys now building a business together, I'm totally supportive of you. If there's anything I do to help, let us know. I hope they, the listeners have enjoyed it. I know if I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Uh, if you're watching today, this is The Money Is Show, and we'll see you next week on The Money Is Show.